Chapter 6. Let the bodies hit the floor. I had to. You stared at the screen, stunned as you examined the evidence in front of you. Oh my god, could Coda be the killer? You look across the water to find fun-loving Coda dunking Tyson below the water surface and holding him there, his grip too strong for Tyson to break free. Get off of him. Huh? The shock of her yell loosens his grip, and Tyson pops back to the surface, unharmed. All right, you got me that time. Wait, what's going on? I think there's something you all need to see. The gang gathers around you as you enlarge the picture and hold out the phone for them all to see. Is it Coda's bedroom? And it's full of Stappy Joe stuff? Who hangs pictures of a serial killer? At once, the group turns on Coda. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't think I'm behind the desk, do you? I think. The evidence is weird, but not damning. Innocent until proven guilty, right? Thank you. Still, the others don't look convinced, and as Coda stands with you, you find you're the only one on his side. Sam, I don't know how you're so chill about this. They could have killed your sister. Based on what? My decorating skills? You guys, it's me. Coda, your room is practically a shrine to Stabby Joe. You gotta admit, it's a little weird. Coda, it looks like a full-on obsession. Like one that a copycat killer might have. Look, I'll admit, I'm a Stabby Joe fan, but... That's only because the legends what inspired me to study film in the first place. You, that, and you and Destiny, of course. Us. What did we do? Oda shrugs and shoots you a condrin smile. I knew the legend of Stabby Joe with, like, everyone else in the town, so I'd assumed all the nasty things people said about the carpenters and was true. Well, geez, with friends like you, who needs enemies? Whoa, come on. Everything about Stabby Joe portrays him as a crazed maniac. But when I met you in Destiny, you guys were so... normal. That's all fine and well and good, but what's it got to do with the cost of apples in Cordonia? It made me realize there were real people attached to the legend, and they deserve better than the sensationalization of their ancestors. The realization sparked an obsession with portraying horror stories with compassion, and it's now I got into one of the best film schools in the country. Okay, but... How come you've never mentioned any of this before? None of us knew you felt this strongly, and it's making me wonder whether you're making all this up to save your skin. Destiny knew. Cheap even starred in some of my first movies. Without her, I, I don't know if I'd have the courage to go as far as I have with my work. Too bad she can't corroborate that. You know, on the account of her being dead and all. Maybe, but on film, she's alive and kicking. So if you want to see proof, say the word. So you're not the Stabby Joe copycat killer? No! Okay, okay, I just wanted to, you to say it out loud. Because that's the truth. Guys, I don't think you understand how brutal this guy was. I couldn't kill anyone, but especially not like he did. Got a shudder at the thought, and something about his reaction piques your interest. What do you mean, not like he did? I'll spare you the details, but he basically tortured his victims. Their deaths were slow and super painful. That's interesting. The coroner said Destiny's death would have been near painless, like falling asleep. Close your eyes, and your mind's eye replace the moment your sister gradually slipped away, her face serene. Uh, yeah, it's definitely not how Stabby Joe killed. I wonder what else is different about her copycat. Well, if you're serious, I just watched a reenactment of Stabby Joe's murders based on the prison guard's testimony. I could show you if you want. Show me. That's what she said. You look around at the rest of your friends. You guys in? Where you go? We go, Sam. Yeah, we've got your back. One by one, your friends all nod and Coda claps his hands together. All right then, follow me. 
the five of you get dressed and go to lead you all the way back to his house. There, the five of you settle in around the TV as he digs through piles of Stabby Joe movies. Your grandma let you keep all of this in her house? She may or may not think I was watching soaps, but what can I say? Unky lets me live my life, and I let her live hers. Honestly, I think we're both afraid of what we'd find if we snooped. Got it. Toto holds up a VHS and pops it into the player before joining you on the couch. The intro for the staticky B-list film fills the screen. Now playing as Morillic Island Penitentiary Prison Guard, Tommy Danes. Your face still smarting from the sting of tap, Stabby Joe's blade. You pace inside of the criminal's empty cell. I can't believe he's gone. Give it a rest, Danes. We've got people searching the prison. He can't have gone far. But he shouldn't have been able to get out of a cell at all. It's just not possible unless... You sweep your light around the cell. You should look for clues behind the mattress sink chair. Sink. You grip the heavy metal box with two hands and muscle it away from the wall only to hear the jangle of metal hitting the concrete floor. What the... You stoop and sweep your hand across the dusty floor to find a key. Now what else are you hiding, Campbell? You sat across about testing the cell. As you rip the dirty mattress away from the wall, you find a crudely dug hole in the floor. Holy! Looks like it drops into the proper tunnel underneath the cell. You flash your light inside, but nothing but the rat stir. Within seconds, you've made up your mind. Get on the radio. Tell everyone they need to whiten the search parameters. What are you going to do? I'm going in. You brace yourself before dropping the six or so feet into the tunnel below. I can see his footprints headed in that direction. I should fall after him and give him a chance to surrender. No, try and sneak up on him. You keep the beam of your flashlight low to the ground, following the footprints in the dirt and keeping yours as quiet as possible until the dirt underfoot turns to stone and the trail of footprints runs cold. Damn it. You let your flashlight illuminate the rest of the tunnel ahead and find yourself at a crossroads. I feel like everybody would go left. I'll go right. You head down the right tunnel listening carefully for any sign of movement up ahead. How long has he been planning this? And if he has something to dig his way down here, what else has he managed to get his hands on? Suddenly a soft sound up ahead stopped you in your tracks. I hear footsteps, I'm sure of it. I must be going the right way. Ah, pun intended. You pick up the pace, doing your best to stay silent until a piercing scream sounds from somewhere up ahead. It sounds like a woman. You take off sprinting down the tunnel, narrowly avoiding a support beam as you skid around the corner, only to see Stabby Joe wielding a bloody knife and standing over the body of a young woman. No! Stop right there, Campbell! But he barely glances at you before tearing off down the tunnel, leaving you to deal with a woman bleeding on the ground. Take care of the woman. You watch him go, fury burning in your chest, but rush to the young woman's side. Miss, stay with me. You eye the deep slash across her neck. Ugh. You tear open her dress to reveal some dark pools of blood from wounds in her stomach. But as you render aid, the victim moans in agonizing pain, and you know there's nothing you can be done for her. Ugh. Even though it shows no slash mark in that picture, ugh. Sorry for your pain, miss. Everything will be alright soon. Her eyes drift over to try and focus on you. Hi. Her breath runs out, then she stops. Her eyes frozen, open, paralyzed with pain and fear. You sit there in silence, holding her hand until the end. Damn you, Campbell. I swear I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth if I have to! As the credits roll, your stomach turns. Did you see the slashes on her stomach? 
Yeah, they look pretty bad. And the wounds were based on the real coroner's report for the first victim. Bleeding out from the stomach can take like hours, depending on the location of the injury. That kind of thing, the, the only quick death that can come from him was the guards. And the theory is he did it out of respect. Yoda. I guess I get it. I mean, waiting until the guard was nearby to kill the woman was a, a pure challenge, and it looked like Stabby Joe was having fun. Pretty twisted way to show respect, but I guess in a killer's mind, they were probably friends. Kind of like Hannibal. That's our best guesses, seeing as it's the only killing that doesn't line up with his brutal M.O. So, what's our theory then? The copycat killer was close to Destiny too. It stands to reason, but honestly, I don't know. Maybe we should get more familiar with Stabby Joe's history. That way, we can identify any discrepancies between him and the copycat. Might be a good idea, but it could help us find the psycho. And he died long ago. The, all of his info should be public record by now. What do you think, Sam? As one, your friends turn to you, and it reminds you of the way they defer to your sister. Is this what it felt like to be you, Death? Yes, this is a lot of pressure. But I won't let you down again. You heave a sigh and square your shoulders. I think we're going to the library. Let's go. You let Coda take the lead when you and your friends reach the library. There's a section of books that mention the story, but a lot of those are kind of unreliable. The actual records of it are over here. Coda pulls open a filing cabinet drawer packed with folders. Okay, I guess everyone just grab something and dig in. Sounds good to me. As Lucky, Zare, and Tyson crowd around to grab something, you take the first folder over to a nearby table with Coda. Okay, Stabby Joe, show us what you got. This one is records from the prison. His prison number, full name, physical description. What are these scribbles all over it? You look closer at the first document to find notes, recent ones. These are obsessive. Weird. I don't remember seeing any of the notes like this on this stuff when I was looking at it. Well? What kind of information were you looking for? Because whoever left these notes are definitely fixated on Stabby Joe as a person. Well, the weird, or the stuff that initially got me interested was how someone could actually enjoy hurting people like that. But now I've really uh, been stuck or struck by the public's reaction and how fear turns into hate so fast. Like, even for people who had nothing to do with it. He eyes you pointedly as you remember your less than warm welcome back to town and you nod. Uh, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about it like that. But as Coda gets up to grab a file, you quickly check the card in the back. Coda's the last one who borrowed this file, and according to this, he borrowed it in the middle of the semester? When else has he been home that I haven't known about? You tuck the card back in its sleeve before anyone else can see it. I'll keep that in mind, but right now I need to focus on the Stabby Joe research. As you wade deeper into the files, you find uh, you can't help but dwell on the fact that you're related to this creep. Wow. Really makes you think. What does? Just, what does it say about me that my ancestor was such a horrible person that he inspired other horrible people to copy him? That's, like, gotta be the lowest of the low. We share DNA. A shame forces you to bow your head, but a warm hand catches your chin. It's not your DNA's fault, Sam. Nurture is just as big a factor as nature. We do live in a town that celebrates him. You know, Terror Fest wasn't supposed to be like this. At first, it was a memorial to remember the victims. But a rifles with the papers in a nearby folder and pulls out an old newspaper. Here, this paper from the first ever Terror Fest? Well... What we know as Terrorfest, anyway. Look. Wow. It started as a candlelight vigil? Coda had you a paper from just a few years later, and now a menacing photo of Savvy Joe is printed front and cinder, followed by candid shots from the horror parade. 
I can't believe Terror Fest was supposed to be a memorial, and we turned it into some kitsky second Halloween. With all the romanticizing of it, I can't say I'm surprised. Someone decided to take it further. I think you're lo right, Lucky. I think Terror Fest getting twisted in what it is today definitely contributed to the killer's murder spree. I mean, the island's entire identity is based on Stabby Joe thing these days. If the killer was, saw how glorified the original was, it would make sense that they'd want some of the notoriety for themselves. Coda's right. Somebody overlooked in our society and wanting attention would absolutely fit the profile. You know, if filmmaking doesn't work out, you've got a great criminal profile or career ahead of you, Co. Thanks, but I'd like to keep the guts and gore on screen as much as possible. I still can't believe this is really happening. I believe it. If something in Stabby Joe's legacy really is speaking to the copycat, we've got a need to uncover everything we can to narrow it down and sniff them out. The library's huge. The only way we're going to even remotely scratch the surface is if we... Do not say the word split up. Who do you think we are? Scoob and the gang? Ah, my reference is getting back to PB. It's the fastest way to get all the information we can. We'll cover more ground. Yeah, there's dead bodies scattered across the city. I'm with Lucky on this one. Dota's right about needing to spread out, but I need to be able to keep track of everyone if I want to prove to Bex that none of us is the murderer. Moving locations, be in touch again soon from Bex. You, the shake of your phone alerts you to a new text from Bex as you glance at the screen and the app. My friend finder catches your eye. What if we all share locations? That way, no one can get lost in the shuffle. Reluctantly, the group agrees, but after a quick sync up, Lucky, Coda, and Tyson head off, leaving Zare to linger at the table, their thoughts clearly elsewhere. Everything okay? Yeah, just. You just got to me thinking about my own rotten family tree. What does it say about me that I'm related to someone who would keep a dangerous serial killer a secret for the sake of her image? Or who would I, or who would turn a memorial into a tourist trap glorifying a murderer? What? You grip their shoulder, turning them to face you. You find the normally stoic Zare fighting back against tears in their eyes. Sam, I think my mom's a bad person. Do you want to talk about it? What's going on? Zare sighs and shoves an envelope of translucent sheets into your hands. I was looking through the microfish records and found an article about the first tear fest as we know it. It turns out the rebrand was my mother's idea. This campaign was one of the things she used to kickstart a run for mayor. Whoa. I had no idea. Pull the sheets up to the light and read. Sure enough, bits and pieces jump out at you. A good the transition would be for the economy, protests from the victim's families, and eventually Mayor Jackson's inaugur inauguration in 2003. When you're a kid, you think your parents are superhuman, you know? And then as you get older and start to realize they're not, it's, it's disappointing, but you deal. The look on their face reminds you of the nights when Zare used to sleep at your house. Tears from fight with their mother still fresh. Only now, anger joins the sadness behind their eyes, and it's all you can do not to reach out and pull them into a hug. Finding all this out, it's just like finding out she's some kind of supervillain. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Maybe you can move forward without her? I mean, it's her involvement in this is a deal-breaker for you. There's nothing wrong with taking a step back from your relationship. I know, but... God, it's hard not to get caught up in a familial obligation, you know? Especially since she's the mayor. Like, going no contact would mess with the family politics, but also actual politics. Yeah, you're right. My mom eats, sleeps, and breathes politics. When I decided to change my name, the first thing she did was call it a PR specialist to see how it would play. Hell, if someone had told me she would only adopted me for a boost in the polls, I'd believe them. 
my life has never been separate from my mom's career. And I don't know how I feel. As I spot her, you bridge the gap between you. You feel what? C complicit, I guess? I have no way of knowing if it made a difference in the election, but I'm always up there with her, you know? Sometimes I wonder if the whole happy family image is what won her the office, and if it did, then I played a part in all of this. Slam a hand down on the copycat's killer's nose, smudging the ink with your thumb, and you catch their hand. There, that's not true. Now, Sam, I helped keep her in her power, and look at how she's using it. You didn't know about the cover-ups. You were just trying to support your mom. That's what family does. That's what they're supposed to do. I guess. There, you need to remember that some things out of your, are out of your control. Even if your actions somehow led to this. How could you possibly have known it? I guess. No. No reasonable person thinks that going to support their mom at her job would somehow lead to a serial killer cover-up. You grip your shoulders in your hands, stopping to keep yourself in the eye line as they shy away from your gaze. If you had predicted that, I would have thought you needed to be institutionalized. Okay, I see your point. Besides, you aren't your mom. You can't be held responsible for choices she made. Just like you aren't Stabby Joe. I see what you did there. She pushes forward in your arms and you encircle them in your embrace. I'm glad I'm talking to you of all people about this. You're really the only one who would understand it the most. I guess you're right. Being related to Stabby Joe sucks. There's no point in sugarcoating it. I hate being related to a murderer, but I came to terms with it. Eventually, you realize that being blood relatives with someone doesn't have to mean that much to you if you don't want it to. And being legal relatives with someone could mean even less if I wanted it to. I mean, it's hard to get there, but... It probably will be harder with someone who's still alive. The bottom line is that you are your own person with goals and opinions completely different from hers. You're right. I know you're right. I just, I think it's just going to take a while to sink in. I get it. You take both their hands and yours and look them in the eyes. Let's both make a promise not to let our family's actions define us, okay? I can, if you can. Then let's... Boy, that's abrupt and quick. Just seal the deal with the kiss. We have no actual emotional connection with them whatsoever. We've not breached the relationship thing. Let's just, bam, kiss. Deal? You extend your hand and say your claps in one of their own. Deal. Thank you for this, Sam. It's nice to have a friend like you to remind me who I am. Of course, with things like this, it's crazy. To, it's easy to forget as well. That reminds me. Did the reporter say she'd found anything about me? I'd be pretty pissed if she thought I was in my mother's cover-up thing. What? The lady you were talking to at the hospital. You pause for a moment, your mind racing. Dear... I never mentioned she was a reporter. Right. I recognized her from some press conferences. She's who sent you the photos of Coda's room, right? Yeah, she did. I assume she's looking into all of us then. They look at you expectantly and you freeze. The message from Bex on the tip of your tongue. I could lie, but it's there. I should be able to trust them, right? Actually, she... Mmm. Okay. So I can't say she thinks she did it because literally and figuratively she just sent you pictures of Coda Shrine and insinuated that he might be a killer. So I don't think it's she thinks. I'm gonna go, she didn't say anything else about anyone else. 
she's pretty sure it's Coda. For a moment, silence falls over you and your eyes, you know. Right, well, hopefully she's wrong. Either way, I need to clear my head. I'm gonna go for a walk. Before you can protest, they're gone. And a sinking feeling in your chest emerges at the thought of them going out alone. With they are off on their own, you decide to check on the rest of your friends. You got that app, right? I'm sure that'll play into it. You find Lucky sitting at a table surrounded by sacks of files and newspapers. Whoa, you gotten through all of this? Mostly. It's actually pretty interesting. I see why Coda is so into researching this. What did you find? Well, I found an obituary for Stabby Joe in a paper from 1924, and so far I found two copycat killers that have been active since. Wow, really? And we still celebrate Terrorfest? I know, it's pretty messed up. The first one was caught and died in the prison in the 70s, but the second one was active into the early 2000s. The early 2000s. How come we've never heard about those? Were they caught? No, but I haven't found any reports mentioning them after 2003, so I guess they just stopped or moved or something. I mean, the same year that Zaire's mother was inaugurated and became mayor? Dun dun dun! The year rings a bell, and you can't help but think of Mayor Jackson. Sorry, Miss Jackson! Oh, uh, yeah, or something. Do you think the copycat could have started up again, and now we're dealing with the same person? I doubt it. I mean, why would they just stop killing for 20 years and then randomly start up again? I guess I've got to say, though, I'm impressed. You're really good at research. My school's academic requirements for student-athletes are kind of crazy, so I've gotten used to cramming under pressure. Yeah, maybe you should take a break, though. You work hard all year long. Rest sometimes, okay? Same thing with her. Honestly, it's kind of therapeutic, you know, feeling like I'm actually doing something to bring the killer to justice, instead of running away and letting them kill the people I care about. For one moment, sadness flickers across their, her face, then she schools her expression into a determined frown. Lucky, you know Destiny's death wasn't your fault, right? Before she could answer, a loud beeping cuts her off, and Lucky pats down her pockets, looking for something. She pulls out a small black rectangle and reads something screen. Is that a, a pager? Who the hell still has a pager? Yeah, sorry, I gotta run. I'll catch up with you later. Before you can ask any more questions, Lucky disappears around the nearest bookshelf. First, Zare, now Lucky. Where are they going and why are they so shady about it? You return Lucky's files to their places. I'll shake your concern and suspicion over both of their sudden exits. You find Tyson next bent over an open file cabinet drawer. Hey, I found some pretty cool stuff so far. Oh yeah, like what? Well, first of all, your grandfather on your dad's side was kind of epic. I found an article from the 60s that uh, said a literal angry mob surrounded your house and tried to run him out of town because of his ties to Stabby Joe. <laughs> to get them to leave? He came out with a Stabby Joe mask and a rifle. And we're happy about that? I mean, it was probably pretty effective, but it can't have done much for the family reputation. I mean, kind of like Clint Eastwood coming out with a gun going, get off my lawn, you know? Tyson quickly swipes through the files, and as he gives it a small, a speed read, his smile falls. Oh. Yeah, definitely didn't. He actually fired and accidentally hit someone. Oh my god, did he go to jail? Nope. The judge ruled that he was within his rights to defend his property. Whoa. I guess that's true. I mean, if it really was a dangerous mob, he probably felt like it was the only way to protect his family. The article says he was a husband and two girls inside, so it's possible. Still, couldn't he have just called the police? It's the 60s, dude. It's the 60s. Maybe, but you see how Detective Porter treats you. Ugh, that's true. If the cops still have it out for my family today, but it was way worse back then. Exactly. Tyson so closes the file cabinet and leans against it. I know all the Stabby Joe stuff changes things for you, but it's the reason your life has, has ended up 
the way it is. You can say that again? I mean, I meant for the better and for worse. After all, would you have done your abroad program if not for him? I don't know, maybe not. And there's no way of knowing what else might have changed. For all we know, he's the reason our group friend group found each other. I, you're right. If things hadn't turned out the way they did, I might not even be here or have met you guys. I guess there's no point in regretting the past because it all led me here. Exactly. And I'm definitely grateful for having met you. Me too. You have to work, so hard for so many things you want in life. It's nice to think that some good things just happen on their own. Yeah, I know what you mean. For what it's worth, if we have to go through this, I'm, I'm glad we're going through it together. Me too. In fact... <sighs> Wanna make something good happen right now. You know what? As much as I want to, because at least we have some rapport with Tyson, some build up, right? No. You guys are what's getting me through this. I don't know how I'd survive literally without you guys here with me. I feel the same way. I can't imagine doing life without you guys. I, and I'm really glad we've been able to stay close through college. Even though sometimes it is literally the worst, like right now. I still have a bunch of my own research to do for a paper. Oh, yeah, of course. Go do what you gotta do. I wish I didn't have to, but unfortunately even being chased by a murderer won't be good enough excuse for my professor. I know the feeling. Good luck. As Tyson gathers the things to go, you head off to check on Coda. We're not gonna point out how bad it is for him to leave, really. You find him in a study room, feet perched on a stack of books left on the desk's surface, eating an apple, scrolling on his phone. Hard at work, I see. Well, I've already been through all this stuff like a hundred times, but I wanted to be here for moral support. That's what's so concerning, though. You know so much about the stuff that it's just a little hard to accept as a coincidence. I mean, it's impressive how dedicated you are, don't get me wrong, but I just can't think of a movie research as a valid explanation. Then don't think. Odo flops his feet down, rises, and shoves his phone in his back pocket. There's a movie section upstairs. Let me show you why I respect the genre enough to give it my best, and then you can stop thinking I'm a killer. Deal? Diamond choice, got it. You know what? If you think you can clear your name, go for it. Because right now, I'm not sure what to think. Well, in that case, right this way. Coda leads you up and down the shelf, stopping abruptly in front of one of the DVD aisles. This, unsurprisingly, is my favorite part of the library. The movies, scholarly surprise, Mr. Film Major. Surprise, specifically, the horror movies. I've watched, like, every movie they have here. Glance around at the titles lining the shelves, the violent titles, creepy covers, sending an involuntary shudder down your spine. Why do you like this stuff so much? Because the psychology of fear is really cool. You can tell so much about a person based on what they're afraid of than anything else. Really? How? Hmm, okay. Pick a movie and I'll tell you what it says about you if you're really afraid of it. Well, we're going to be standing here a while because no scary movie actually scares me. Neither do games. I am probably the only content creator on the place of this planet who doesn't scream in literally their scary games. If anything, I make them as entertaining as I try and do some of these videos that are really boring and or want to be scary. Okay, I pick Paranormal Activity The Evil Dead. <sighs> okay, those are two good ones. Those are at least enjoyable. They're not scary, but they're enjoyable. This one's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I liked Paranormal Activity 1. Evil Dead, though, is a good one, too. The OG one, not the remake. The remake's meh. It's okay. Paranormal Activity. Ah, the operative word there is paranormal. Paranormal horror, in general, is all about the fear of the unknown. 
I guess that makes sense. None of the stuff can be explained by science or anything. Exactly. But more than that, it's about things that are out of our control. It's all about making us feel helpless in the face of something bigger than ourselves. I see what you didn't mean. All of these movies are just using story and the spectacle of it all to represent real fears. You're basically a film manager already. Ah, uh, but maybe I should consider it. You stalk up the aisle purposefully now, searching for a new title to present for dissection. Ooh. Okay, we're going through all the cult classics. I like it. What about Alien or The Shining? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, listen, OG Alien is pretty damn good. Face huggers, things bursting through your chest. There wasn't Marines. There was literally just trying to be inventive. The cast and crew were good. Listen, shut up. We're picking Alien. Shining is pretty good too, though. But I'm, I'm, I'm more fond of Alien. It just comes more to mind. I've watched it a couple times. Good pick. I love a monster movie. Uh, those are all about being afraid of the other. Or even being othered. Frankenstein was the OG. So, kind of like being afraid of things you don't understand? Kind of, but in this case, specifically people who are different than, from you. If you identify more with a monster, it can also mean you're afraid of being rejected by your community. I don't see how anyone could identify as literally the alien. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna have to ask you to sit this one out, Mr. Film Major. That's heavy. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, what's so interesting about horror as a genre? Think, people think it's totally unrealistic, but when you actually break down what causes your reaction to it, it's pretty logical. And honestly, that's the secret to conquering any fear. Exactly, and that's why I'm not scared of shit. Wow, you're right. I never thought of it like that, but now that you explain it, it's so obvious. Right? And then there's the classic slasher films like Scream, which is kind of what we're dealing with in real life. Coda. What does being afraid of those say about a person? You know, hypothetically. But a pause to meet your gaze, his voice going soft. It means that you're afraid of humanity's potential for evil. Wow. Yeah. That's about right for the past few days. Yeah. I hope I didn't freak you out anymore. It's just the stuff being able to dissect it, things like this makes them less scary to me. Exactly! No, now that you explain it, I actually see what you mean. Not that it isn't still creepy. But do you see what I mean? Can you at least imagine why I love it so much? He looks at you, the earnestness in his eyes is undeniable. Yeah, I do. When you break it all down like that, it's actually pretty obvious. Coda looks relieved, and as his gaze leaves yours, it wanders to the shelf. He waves at various titles. So pick your nightmare fuel. What are you scared of? Uh, got any of those old screamer videos where you follow a dot with your eyes and then a zombie face jump scares you? Ah, I'm immune to those too. Especially the car one, right? Uh, going up and down the hills, right? And it looks really serene and it's peaceful. And then it just... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. Really, Sam? You're standing amongst greatness, and you choose one of the cheesy internet gags from the early aughts. <sighs> Have I taught you nothing? No, I just wanted to see your face. Cute. You know, I should. Better trails off his eyes, going wide as he stares at something just over your shoulder. Oh my god, Sam. What? What? You whirl around, ready to defend yourself, only to find the aisle empty. Gotcha. I should vow to get him back. Damn it, Ko, you really scared me. We have an active serial killer wandering around, you know. I know, I know, but humor is how I cope. Yes! Okay, I'm starting to like Code a little bit more than Tyson now, I'm just saying. Next time, I'm gonna have the, a heart attack just to spite you. How's that? Bring it on. Some time later, you find yourself still poring over Stabby Joe records. Realistically, I should go home and sleep, but I don't really want to go back to an empty house right now. And a murderer running around makes it creepy enough, but with Destiny gone, I don't want to face that either. 
I'm sure this is going to give us some excuse to sleep with one of our people. You shake your head. <laughs> uh, you shake your head, declare, and focus your attention back on the files in front of you, only to hear a set of footsteps approaching. Excuse me, you're Sam Carpenter, right? And you're that lady from the Hogwarts ripoff book. That's me. Oh, this was just left for you at the a circulation desk. A box for me. Is it someone's heart? Who even knows I'm here long enough to send me something? Package from Bex. Did you or did a uh, message from Bex? Did you get my package? You take the small package, but before you get a chance to open it, your phone buzzes in your pocket with a text from Bex. Did you get my package? Yep, opening it now. Is it more evidence? I'll let you see for yourself. Nervous, you set your phone on the desk, open the box, only to drop it quickly when you see what's inside. <laughs> the nose knows. <laughs> I don't regret. <laughs> I literally had to stop and compose myself. The box hits the floor, sending the severed nose falling out on the carpet, and all you can hear is the sound of your own voice screaming. Oh my god! Eh, li librarian jumped into. Librarian faints. <laughs> as you back away from the blood stain spreading out on the carpet, your phone buzzes again on the desk, and you grab it quickly. I thought I'd return this, since I found it in my business. It's you, isn't it? What the hell did you do to Bex? Oh, Sam. Let's just say Bex is no longer with us. But at least a part of her will always be with you. Oh my god, we're still texting the villain here. No more reporters, Sam. From here on out, it's just you and me. I had her liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Really? Actually, you know what? Why was Silence of the Lambs not on that list? It's actually a really good movie, I'm just saying. Anyway, without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and the description. Plenty of things to check out. Ways to support, and there is the join and thanks feature. Alright, so pretty much, um... I love you. I love each and every one of you that actually stay to the end of these. Really, you truly make my day. Uh, so let me know in the comment section below what you thought. Hopefully I made you laugh, right? See, I'm not like those other content creators, and I take pride in that. You will never find another content creator like me on the face of the planet. Prove me wrong. Tell me one that's like me, right? Like, I've watched a lot of some of the greats, right? I, I respect Mark and Jack and a lot of people. And, like, long story short is, is is my list, however, is growing smaller because some of them are you're either quit or they're being found out as bad people. So what a, what a surprise there. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> those are two of the greats that I respect. And, um, you know, I don't know. It's just I, I, I try and give you guys something that no one else on the planet gives you. No one else is reading these stories, for, first and foremost. Just normal voice right now, like I'm talking to you. No one's reading to you. And then also no one's doing the voices either. And then also I try and insert jokes and things like that or little nuggets of wisdom or, you know, things that, you know, maybe strike a chord with me. And so hopefully you guys do enjoy them, right? Um, I, I just, I knew what was going to happen. I expected a heart, but the nose just, mwah, chef's kiss. It was actually pretty good um, because she's nosing around in the business. And then just, I just, <laughs> the nose knows, okay? Um... Listen, that's a common thing that I actually say in my life. Like, you know, if I smell something and people are like, I don't smell that. I'm like, listen, the nose knows. And if I call it, right, 99.9% .9 of the time, okay, because there's always room for error. But 99.9% .9 of the time, I always smell what I smell. And people are like, how? And I'm just like, I have a super nose. There's a few things on me that I have super, like, human of. Like, my hearing, for starters, right? My eyesight and my nose. Like, all my senses are just highly just high just whoo boy like you need me to see like someone throw a pen a mile down the street i got you fam um license plates the whole night i got you so you know and then hearing in games you know i i hear things before everyone else and yada 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 
So I, I take pride in that. Also, you know, getting on horror movies and things like that. I love those. I love those. Every year we, we play a bunch of like spooky, scary games here on the channel. Um, if you haven't checked those out, man, feel free. Every single probably scary game that you can think of, right, I have played. And especially since I've been a content creator for 12, well, actually 13 plus years. But um, long story short is there's not actually surprisingly that many scary games anymore. A lot of them are really stupid and cheesy and a lot of people are just, they're like, wow, where's an actual scary game for once? And so like this year, uh, I'm thinking about replaying some of the the goodies, right? Um, for like the month of Halloween and whatnot. Or well, I I like how I say the month of Halloween. You know what? It is a whole month. Let's be honest. The whole year for me is Halloween because I love the holiday. I love it more than any other holiday. Which let me know if you got this far in the video. How? Which holiday do you like the best? Me, I'm a huge Halloween fan. Um, listen, I like goth girls. Okay, I like dark chocolate. I like coffee. Um, not the vanilla bean stuff every once in a while. Okay. But like dark coffee, right? I make great coffee. Trust me. And, uh, yeah, no, those are things that I enjoy. I'm black. Okay. I wear black like 90% of the time. So, you know, the only thing I don't do is fingernails, tattoos, or makeup. I, I found a normal balance of being invisible to society. I believe those things just bring you more attention. Anyway, thanks for watching. Love your beautiful faces. Catch you all later. Peace out.